Mokhtar here coming at you with another review. We are doing some special pours this evening. I'm celebrating. I finished my first full week of work. Uh, very excited to have these three days off. And now I am going to drink something that I have been wanting to try for quite some time. So what we have on the menu tonight, I have two different bottles of things that were sent to me by Drizzle 41. We are going to do the Maker's Mark Cask Strength and Stag 23B. So I'm excited to try these pours. Y'all join me as we go through them. I think I want to start with the Maker's. I believe this is the lower proof of the two. Can't tell what that says. I think it says 101.7 proof. I could be wrong there. It might be higher. Some of the numbers are a little smudged. Definitely looks like a 1-0, but I can't tell what that other one is. Now, this is the first Maker's product that I have tried. Um, Maker's has some bad memories for me. It's not something I, uh, I ever anticipate purchasing a bottle of, but who knows? This could change my mind. Um, is not something I have tried in a very long time, so I don't know what to expect from it. The oil on it is very thin, which I think that's the first one I've reviewed that I've had to say that about, but it is separated at the top, so not a continuous band. It's, it's uh, like the dots that run around the top of the glass at the height of where the... Uh, bourbon had been sitting and while i have that getting some air i'm gonna pour a stag pour also so that that can start giving some air on it but we're gonna try the makers first we're gonna work our way up in proof so interesting Smells really sweet. Like a honey sweetness. Very, very light vanilla. It does sting the nostrils. You can tell it's a hundred proof. Um, not in a bad way. As you know, I like things that have proof on them. That's not a bad thing for me, but I'm trying to tell what else is in this because it does smell like honey, some light vanilla. I can't tell what else is there. I can't tell if that's baking spice, like cinnamon, or if that's the proof that's just hitting me that way. But we'll know here in a second. To trying new things, cheers. First thing I'll say is that does not drink its proof. It nose is a lot heavier than what it drinks. Like it stings my nostrils. Hmm. And that flavor definitely evolves as it goes. This the proof is what surprised me the most. So I've got to go back to it for the tasting notes because the the lack of burn. Kind of threw me off a second there. So, round two. Huh.
So mouthfeel is more oily than it looks. I'll give it credit for that. It does have a very creamy mouthfeel to it. It, um, man. So you get the honey up front, and then it fades mid palate into like a citrus note. Okay. To me, it's almost like an orange. Kind of bitter, so maybe like orange peel or orange zest but definitely sweet. So that honey fades into that orange, and then on the back side of it, the finish, it's all cinnamon. Cinnamon or allspice, one of the two. The burn is very minimal, and it's only in the throat. It doesn't burn your tongue. It's, it's like a numbing sensation on the tongue. It's definitely an enjoyable pour, but this is not what I remember makers tasting like at all. This is, this isn't triggering any memories for me. I do enjoy that citrus note. That's the first one I've ever gotten orange or like a citrus kind of a scent out of and taste. That's that, that little bit that I couldn't identify. So on the nose, smells like honey. It, it even kind of coats the palate. You get this, this sense that you're eating a spoonful of honey. That light vanilla and then this orange zest comes through on the nose. And then, of course, tasting. Honey. That citrus mid-palate. Finishing with that baking spice. And the baking spice gets stronger as it sits. A little bit of brown sugar on the finish too. It's, it's a sweetness that's there with the baking spice. But it's kind of earthy. It's a good taste. Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed this pour. Absolutely. Which is surprising. Again, not a fan of Makers, but this, um, it's not a bad pour. Drinks very smooth. Finishes smooth. That's something I could see myself having. I could see myself having a bottle of that. Nothing wrong with it. It's not a new favorite, I will say that. Um, enjoyable pour. Easy to drink, low burn, good flavors, but not anything that made me go, wow, I got to tell everybody about this. That Good pour. Very good pour. Just no wow factor. And that leads us into the second pour, which I should probably. Cleanse my palate because this is Stag 23B. Once again, thank you, Drizzo, for sending me these samples. Again, we are celebrating my first week of work concluding. I've got three days off to enjoy plenty of these pours. Now, this one in particular. So we're at 100 and something proof for the makers. For the Stag 23B, it's 127.8. So we're going up quite a bit in proof. And the surprising thing is that the oil is doing the same thing that the makers did. However, it is a lot thicker of a coating on the glass. This is a fairly dark caramel, dark amber color. Looks good. Whew. So this doesn't hit the nose like you would expect 127 proof to do. Like, I got more burn on the nose out of the makers than what I'm getting out of this stag. Which makes me really hope that the flavor is as smooth. Hmm. Interesting. 
See, I was expecting to get that big nostril hit, and so now I'm trying to pick apart flavors and, and fascinated by the fact that it's not stinging my nostrils the way that I expected it to. It does sting. There is a burn there, but it's not like a heavy ethanol. It's not, it's not overwhelming. I get a lot of caramel, like a heavy toffee note, and a lot of oak. It's like a woody, earthy kind of a smell to it. Smells a little more bitter than what the makers did. The makers, I mean, it coated my palate like honey, so you have that immediate sense of sweetness. With this one, it's more of that bitterness that kind of hits the tongue. Not in a bad way. It's just there's a light sweetness to this one instead of a, a upfront sweetness like what I got with that maker's cask string. Caramel, toffee, that oak. And it's that borderline oak. It's sweet, but it also you can smell that, that kind of bitterness, that, that woody scent. And there's an earthy sweetness in this one too, like the brown sugar. Note that I got on the flavor, or on the, the palate of the makers. It's like smelling a bag of brown sugar. Doesn't smell bad. I'm excited to try this one. So cheers again. Thank you, Drizzo. Wow. Wow, that hits hard. Okay. I say it hits hard, but initial impression, it's sweeter than I anticipated. You taste a lot of that oak throughout the experience. So forward, mid, and finish, a lot of that oak really remains, which it's not a bad level. It smells more bitter than it tastes. It is definitely a sweet oak. Um, and that's, that's coming from a lot of these earthy, darker, sweet flavors, like, like toffee and I don't want to call it dark chocolate. There is like an earthy brown sugar kind of a taste to it on the finish, but it coats the tongue really well. The oil in this one it gives a much more viscous mouthfeel than what the makers did. The makers coated the mouth well, it was like honey. This does an even better job of it. On the front, yeah, right up front, toffee straight toffee that sweet caramel like i almost want that crunch from a from biting into a hard caramel or a toffee man and then that fades into and again you get that sweet oak throughout so the sweet oak note doesn't go away at all on the tongue for this one so you get that toffee up front and that kind of fades into more of that sweet oak with what is that? Sweet oak and a heavy cinnamon. The sweetness of the toffee. And that brown sugar note on the finish, because that's what it finishes with, is like an earthy brown sugar. Yeah, brown sugar and cinnamon. 
but the cinnamon on the mid palate, that's where that starts to come through. The burn doesn't happen until you swallow. Once you swallow, it gives you that Kentucky hug and it kind of ignites the mid palate. So up front, you're getting that, that toffee note. You're getting like this really sweet, sweet oak and that toffee. And then it fades as you swallow. You get that burn in the throat and then that kind of ignites the cinnamon flavor throughout your mouth. And it just, it's coating everything. So you get this, this nice hit of cinnamon and then it fades into that brown sugar, more of the toffee, the cinnamon is still there. It's resting on the palate. You can feel it throughout your mouth, that good level of burn. Makes you kind of take a deep breath. That's the sensation that I get, almost like a like a cinnamon altoid. The way that it kind of clears your nostrils. And now that I've tasted it, that brown sugar comes through on the nose even more. It's this earthy, dark woody kind of a scent that you would expect, maybe even like raw cinnamon, like cinnamon bark. Yeah, brown sugar, cinnamon bark, which for those of you who didn't know, cinnamon is a bark from a tree. You learned something new today. Man, it's, it's delicious. I have no complaints about this particular one. It's the right level of burn. Um, and I say that meaning it, it's listed at 127 proof. Drinks like it's 110, maybe 105, like that kind of a range. It's very low burn for the level of proof that is on this one. And the way that it transforms on the palate, it's an experience to drink it. And that to me is exciting. You know, it's it's one thing when you get sweet notes, like what I got with the makers earlier. It's enjoyable, but having an experience where the flavors just transform completely. So starting off with that initial hit of the toffee and that, that sweet oak, and then when you swallow, it just, it lights your mouth on fire with that cinnamon, and then that fades even more into that brown sugar and giving you that, that really viscous cinnamon mouthfeel with that sweet oak undertone. I mean, this is, this is an enjoyable pour from every aspect. This is something I could drink while eating like dark chocolate with some, some almonds in it. Like I almost want a crunch. I want something to go with this that would be crunchy and give me that feel of eating toffee while drinking it. That's what this reminds me of. And it is an extremely enjoyable pour. Is it as dessert as Rebecca Creek Double Spanish Oak? Nowhere near, okay? I'm not making that claim. For what it is though, for the level of oak that is in this, for the level of caramel and toffee that comes through, it's it's... It's almost like you should put it in its own category just because of the difference in the flavor profile. I know they're both bourbons. I know it's all whiskey, but there's just something that they did with the stag that is completely enjoyable. Mm. Both of those tonight, extremely easy sippers. I would definitely recommend that you try them if you get an opportunity to do so. Uh, thank you again, Drizzo, for sending me those samples. You rock. This was absolutely amazing. Thank you all for celebrating with me as uh, you know, I started this new job with Rebecca Creek. I am thoroughly enjoying what I get to do. Had some good conversations. Um, I'm looking forward to Monday. The, uh, the head distiller, uh, me and him were talking and uh, he talked about bringing out the whiskey thief and uh, sampling some of the experimental barrels that we have there in the warehouse while we're bottling. Um, so I am hoping that, it, I hope we do it during the day, but even if we don't, after I get off of work, I'll stay a little bit late and sample some experimental bottles. I'll see if I can get it on video for you guys, but if not, I'll definitely let you know what's in the works because of this stuff, it's delicious what Rebecca Creek is doing. Not to take away from makers and not to take away from Stag with uh, with what they have in the glasses that I enjoyed tonight, but 
I'm telling y'all, there's something special going on at Rebecca Creek, and I'm happy to be a part of it. So uh, thank you all for watching. Hit that like, hit subscribe. Make sure you tell your friends to come check out the channel. I'm just trying to encourage people to do things that they haven't done before, to try new things and explore flavor profiles, to understand that every bottle can truly be different, even inside of its own brand. Um, you got to try them all. Don't be afraid of the higher proof because there really is more flavor. It is more complex and you will get that transformative experience as it hits your palate and coats it and does what it does best. So thank you again for watching. You guys are amazing. Hope you all have a great night. Drink responsibly. And as always, God bless.